Hi, uh, good afternoon and you're very welcome to our session today on photography. Thanks for joining us. A uh, fantastic panel here today and um, I'm Michelle and I work at IADT and I'm delighted to welcome the panel. I might just actually ask each of the panel members to introduce themselves and say a little bit about um, where they're at at the moment. Hello, how are you? Um, my name is David, David Monaghan. Uh, I'm a graduate of IADT from way back in 1997 or something like that. And since then I've been working away um, as a photographer. Um, at the moment, I mostly work in cultural heritage photography, teaching, and I uh, make photographs of my own work uh, in, the, in the art sphere, and I print for other photographers also. That's where I'm at at the moment. Thanks, David. Okay. My name is Sarah Louise Lorden. Um, I'm a 2021 graduate from the photography degree. Um, I work freelance predominantly at the minute. Um, I'm riding on the coattails of my graduate project. <laughs> um, and I've been showing work in a couple of places and I'm now working in an art bookshop in time to make money. <laughs> um, I'm Mark Dupre. I'm also a very recent graduate. I was from the same class as Sarah. Um, recently completed an internship in Seville working in commercial product photography. And at the moment, just playing the field, trying to build up some clients uh, in terms of freelance and applying for shows and bits and pieces along the way as well. That's fantastic. Thanks so much for giving us your time here today. You know, um, this is a fantastic opportunity for our current students um, who are studying photography and also potentially if people are watching this uh, recorded for prospective students who might be considering studying photography with us at IADT to get a flavour from lots of different perspectives in terms of where you can go with such a qualification and the various different um, careers that photographers can have. Um, David, I, I might just um, come to you uh, first, if I may. Um, yeah. So say um, some of our, our current students are watching this and they um, maybe haven't secured something specific for kind of uh, when they graduate. Mm -hmm. What might be sort of the next um, steps that, that, that you would suggest that they would be taking? Well, again, there's one interesting area that I don't think uh, a lot of people look at, which is this whole area of cultural heritage photography, right? Which is, the, I suppose, um, institutions like uh, museums and collections actually are transitioning from the physical space to the digital space. And there's huge uh, financial commitment from government to that process. So places like the um, National Library of Ireland, the National Museum of Ireland are transferring their collections and digitizing lots and lots and lots of work, whether they be printed matter or uh, photographic collections or whatever. So um, over the next few years, there's gonna be a lot of work in those areas. Um, and um, it is an area that I started working as soon as I left the IADT. Somehow I, I answered an ad that was on the back of the darkroom door um, and I, I was going nowhere from, from college. I was wondering what's going to happen next. And I went and interviewed for a job in the National Library for a three month kind of a position over the summer. I think I worked there till Christmas that year. And in the meantime, I met somebody from the museum down in a coffee shop on Kildare Street and they invited me over to show my portfolio and bang, I was in there for two years working. And you know, gleaned so much knowledge of working the working environment, and um, I was working in this fascinating kind of place, you know. Um, so it's an area of photography that is um, that is not usually uh, looked at. So people are looking at advertising, commercial, fashion, um, and generally that's the, that's where people head off to with their portfolio. You know, they try and assist with a photographer who's working too, an ad agency or something like that, and then build their own client base slowly. Um, but I've been working in this area, I think I worked successfully in it right the way up to the financial crash, which was 2009-10. Um, and then after that, then the things had to change at my career. Uh, but I'll, I might talk a, bit, a little bit about that later on. Yeah, great, thanks, David. So I suppose there's a couple of themes coming out of that. One is that 
keep an open mind in terms of what you might end up doing mm -hmm. and that there's mm -hmm. often lots of opportunity in places that you might not initially consider exploring. Um, and the other um, interesting thing that I hear you saying is sometimes opportunity knocks where you might not expect it to. And, you know, in a sense, you know, not to be maybe getting too stressed in terms of not knowing what it's going to look like exactly because these things can evolve. Absolutely, and 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 stress is one thing you don't want in actual fact. I mean, but when you're when you're in college and you're in process, I mean, it's a really really a good thing, not to be so much focused on that academic uh, kind of, uh, you know, ticking boxes in regards to an academic uh, response, um, but definitely exposing yourself to the media that's available, to, you know, while you're in college. There's so much tech available while you're there. And there's so many different areas that you can apply yourself to and learn really, really well that will stand to you when you actually go out into the field. For example, at that particular time, um, I, in, the, in the last few months of my course, I immersed myself in 4x5 photography, which was that kind of tricky thing of the day. And people kind of avoided it because it was kind of technically cumbersome, you know. And so I got into that and worked at it really, really hard because it was a skill I wanted to leave with. You know, and if you can identify some skills that are essential when you're in college and make it your business to actually, you know, well, acquire those skills either through practice or by, you know, associating yourself with people who are used to using those things and learning from them and taking as much as you can from them. That's a real, it's a really plus to you moving forward, you know. Thanks, David. And um, I might come to Sarah Louise next, or maybe just ask you a similar question, you know, for people who are watching who um, are, you know, just about to embark on their, their career straight out of college. Um, what do you think are good next steps? I think evaluating what you're wanting to do with the work that you do is a very big thing. I mean, throughout my whole college career, I knew I didn't want to be doing commercial work but that is an aspect of you accept that there will, will always be a commercial aspect to it it's the money maker at the end of the day but I think knowing that you have an avenue that you want to go down I was very adamant that I wanted to have my work shown in galleries so that was what I left doing I took all of the advice that our lecturer and final year had given us on applying for residencies applying for shows make your CV something that is palatable, readable, make sure your artist's bio is to the point and succinct and tells a very brief story about you. So those are like the core things to get down straight out of it. Make sure that that is something that you're editing on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, if it's going that fast. But getting out of college straight away, I think I took two weeks off and I was straight into applying for shows and competitions, which is the best thing like the internet's amazing there's a whole website just for photo photography photography competitions um and i go on there every week and i'm applying to a new show every week doesn't mean i get them but doing it gets you into the sort of the routine of okay what's going on this week what can i apply to and once you've kind of finessed it and you've done so many applications they're not so daunting, which is a huge thing because they come across as absolutely terrifying, but they're just not like, I am a fiend for copying and pasting now. That's, <laughs> that's what I do because it's at the point where I don't need to do anything other than say, this is what my work is. You're gonna like it or you're not. Um, and on that point, it's also a big thing was accepting that people are gonna say no. Um, you get that in college, but I think coming out of it, it ends up being a little bit more personal you feel like if someone is saying no to your work it's like oh gosh they really don't like my work and it must be my work's fault but it's not the case it just means that it's not fitting to the show and I think that that is having the perspective to see okay this work it's not that they don't like it it just means that it's not fitting to the theme or the gallery or whoever the curator is um so accepting that the no is not a personal attack but just a a thing that is inevitable in the world of art is also a huge lesson that I learned. Um, for like every 10 no's you get, you might get one yes, and that one yes is going to make you forget about all the no's. Um, did that answer the yeah, question? Thanks, thanks, Sarah. And some really good practical advice in there as well. And our paths have crossed before, and what always strikes me is 
you know, the extent to which you're really passionate about what you do. And, um, you know, uh, it, it seems like um, since you've graduated that you're, you know, you're, you're exploring lots of different avenues and you're really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't have another option. So <laughs> I'm running out of options. This is my, this is the way I'm moving forward. So I have to uh, yeah. give it my all. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Mark, I might bring you in. I, I think, did you say you and Sarah were actually in the, the same year group? Yes, we were indeed. And it's, you know, Sarah's a wonderful powerhouse, I think, you know, and she's a great resource for me. And I think a number of other of our classmates are getting all these little references, little resources, little open calls. She's always sending into our, you know, our Facebook group chat, guys, look at this open call for some exhibition in Belfast or everything. So, so Sarah, you know, I'm even inspired looking at her. And one thing I wanted to sort of add to David and Sarah's points was the, uh, the, the, the to, to be flexible, I guess, and to be prepared to maybe just as you're starting off, do, do the jobs that maybe aren't totally pretty or don't exactly fit into what maybe your idea of how your style or how your path wants to go. You know, um, I mentioned at the start that I completed an internship uh, where I spent three months photographing jewellery um, on white backgrounds. So in about, I suppose I'll give a bit of context, in about my second year or third year, I realised I wanted to be a studio photographer mostly and focus on still life. And that that, that would be where my personal practice lies. Um, so I came into this internship with a whole range of ideas, um, lots of different styling ideas, and then it turned out my client or my employer um, said, no, we, we want just something quite plain and simple. And so I had to adapt, be flexible and be willing to change. And that was quite a big personal lesson I learned at the start, um, uh, realizing that I think in college you can, you know, maybe you have, have a bit too much freedom sometimes maybe and then to enter this real world in a more commercial setting it was a very it was a valuable lesson anyway to kind of um adjust and fit into what exactly a client wants thanks thanks mark it's it's lovely to hear all the different perspectives and welcome vanessa vanessa is my colleague vanessa is um head of our department of film and media here at iadt I can't hear you there, Vanessa. I think you might be muted. Can you hear me back. now? Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, just when you think you have your tech all set, it, uh, it lets you down last minute. I do apologise. Um, thanks so much, Michelle, um, for hosting. And um, it's so lovely to see uh, such great graduates and the amazing work that they're doing out in the industry. I've been following um, all of your work uh, quite closely and we're really proud of um, our graduates and indeed Sarah Louise and, and possibly Mark and, and David have um, you know have stayed really connected I think to the department and to and to the staff and to the teaching staff which is really um, heartwarming to see and it's something we're very proud of in IEDT is to stay very connected. We're we're a small college, we've large number of students, but we we because we all know each other so well, I think it is a lovely thing that we do all stay really connected and really positive. Um, I'm not aware of what you've um, discussed um, so far, um, but I would like to pick up on something and, uh, you know, I I know that you've been winning awards and your work has been celebrated and, um, you know, um, uh, but one of the things that I wanted to uh, talk about was um, kind of that sense of building a career after after graduation. And I know I may have missed some of the conversation, but one of the ways I was thinking about taking it was into um, the area of funding and say, you know, Arts Council funding or have you been broaching that? I know, Mark, I heard you talking about you, you know being a studio photographer and that's interesting and then maybe David um might feed into that as well and if you've had any experience yet of um applying and um what that is like and uh, what supports are out there for that and just your experience of it I don't know if um if David you want to kick that one off well now uh, funding <laughs> i have applied for funding on a couple of occasions and found it a very tough kind of uh, kind of uh, route 
And I suppose um, um, I was talking earlier and I came up to the point where I was working away, you know, as a photographer up to the uh, last financial crash of 2009-10. And I had to look and evaluate my career actually at that point and see where was I going to go with it and how was things going to work out for me? Because actually where I found myself working was in cultural heritage photography um, and I was specializing in that area and I was working as kind of a... Uh, um, uh, a solo kind of operation, you know, sole trader working on, on contractual work to um, uh, institutions around about the place. And all of that um, work dried up all of a sudden, gone. And um, so I'm looking, how do I actually change direction or what do I do to actually make things move forward? Um, so at that point, I started actually looking at my own sort of personal practice. It was interesting to reignite that because I, through, those, through those years, 10 years after graduating, I was working away, but tipping away, making some little pieces of work and um, and always keeping my interest in gallery shows, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and at that particular point, it was 2012, 2010, I think, 2010, um, I started posting on a blog page and that sort of was something that actually gave me a, a platform to actually make work. Now, those platforms have changed, I suppose, radically and we're now in a hugely different world, which I kind of, Turn away, turn away from because it's so complex and complicated. Um, but at that particular time, it was very, very interesting, right? Um, and so um, I started making personal work at that particular point. And now I've lost the actual point of your question to start off with was funding. Okay. And so I suppose my work became kind of self kind of funding and self perpetuating to a point. And um, I only had to really engage with, um, with, um, funding bodies here in Ireland when I um, secured a major exhibition in Melbourne in Australia, right? At that point, I made an application to um, Culture Ireland for transportation funding, which I, I, I'm not cynical, but <laughs> I would say because I had the backing of a museum from Melbourne, they couldn't really refuse the application. Right. Um, so I got I got good funding at that particular point for that particular piece of work. Um, but but um, it's a it's an arduous task actually to make to make a funding application for sure. Mm -hmm. And as Sarah said initially, you can become disheartened when you get a refusal, and people do get a lot of refusals. But there are people who get awarded uh, funding. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And we're now coming into a space where, in actual fact, there is um, a greater talk about um, paying the artist, which was something that was kind of a situation that was abused. There was a lot of free art around in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, and graduates are people who would find themselves, I suppose, in some way exploited in that area where they're not paid enough for their works and for their contributions, you know? And so that is changing, which is fantastic. And there are, um, I, I, actually, a notification just came up there on my screen, which is from the, the, the Campaign for Artists, their latest update of what's going on there regarding this process, you know? So, um, so maybe uh, Sarah says she's been successful in, in achieving some sort of funding recently. Am I right, Sarah? Did you say that? Not funding, but uh, competitions. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. Very okay, different, okay. but I mean, yeah, same, yeah, same, yeah. different, different. But uh, no, I've been applying for residencies and it's hugely competitive. Like you've got one residency and it's throughout the whole of Ireland. You could have hundreds of artists all applying for the same thing. So the big thing that I'm always trying to remind myself is I need to zoom out and say, okay, how many of us is there? Where are we in our journeys? How many of us are just starting out? And it doesn't mean no, it just means not right now. That wasn't the one for you. I've applied for one that's going to Finland. I've applied for one that's going to Sweden. And I want them, I want them so badly, but they don't come to me. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm accepting my fate that this is not meant to be for me, but something will come and it's inevitably bound to come because this is what I'm meant to do. Um, it's very airy fairy, metaphysical if you wish, but that is how I try and keep myself on the right track of something will come, it will come, it will come. Um, and in saying that, I mean, the great thing with some of the shows that I've had so far, they have commissioned me to make the work and then they cover the costs of that on the other side of that. There is a lot of great galleries that will do that for you. Um, not all of them, but they will give you some kind of fee, artist's fee and 
that starting out in and of itself is quite a big deal um that I didn't realize I was quite shocked when someone said oh we're going to give you this much money so you can produce this work and then the covering my petrol and everything it was the most absurd bizarre concept that I'd ever even imagined but um things do come to you in small funny ways uh but I don't have much advice about the residencies or the applications other than I know that it is like David said an arduous task and it's it's really daunting and you need to use proper words and special ways of <laughs> describing it and it's just it's beyond me as of right now I was going to apply for the Markovic award and I opened it up and I closed it back down again because I said not this year <laughs> this year I'm not going to do it next year I'll try but um I think yeah, I um, David and, and so Louise raised some really interesting points about, and it's why I asked the question because I could kind of nearly predict the answer. So I, I can come at it from a film art point of view, which is the same kind of funding, you know, the Arts Council Awards, mm -hmm. residencies, uh, bursaries, those kind of funding portals. And the one thing I will tell you very, very clearly is everybody has to, um, apply and never ever, anyone who's become really successful and getting in once you get in and known you're on a trajectory with them if you keep your practice up um and anyone who's been successful that i know of in that regard and some photographers have just never ever given up and the the applications can be daunting but then there is expertise that you can once you are a graduate of our our photography degree you know people like martin healy adrian myself have vast experience in applying and there is sarah louise you're dead right there is a language a lexicon there is a way of presenting your work that's that's unnatural initially and a little unwieldy but it's a great um it's a great um uh skill to develop because all we want to do is make our work, take our photographs, uh, you know, do our research, um, expand our practice, make a living, do whatever it is uh, that is important to us. But these are also extra skills outside of that that kind of don't aren't focused on massively in the undergrad, but that you can uh, key into us in the department um, for help for alumni support for that. We'd only be delighted to do that. Sometimes it's as simple as seeing a successful. Uh, application and I remember I was given that by somebody initially and that was the thing that demystified it and made the difference for me um Mark is that something you are are looking at or, and Sir Louise also you're only just graduated you're already exhibiting in Drift and winning awards there isn't a fear of you uh, your talent is is amazing and um there's no fear but you do have to keep trying and stick with it you'll get those residencies and then your next application when you have a residency on it that helps you get the next one you know it yeah. it, it kind of self uh, propagating and uh, mark have you much experience of that with the art council for me i wouldn't have a lot of experience it's mm. it's it's really a case i think of building up practice and developing a body of work that 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 you feel is worthy of showing or worthy of working on um, so I wouldn't have a lot to say about Arts Council funding. I, I guess while we're talking about the funding, um, I'm quite an advocate for the Erasmus Plus program. Um, you know, I'm talking about this internship a lot, but it is that there's also money there for for recent graduates to go out and work in industry, work in field there, and um, you know have things like accommodation paid for, flights paid for, a stipend, and just it gives you a bit of a footing as well in the industry as well. Um, I've been applying for jobs recently where um, if I didn't have that experience which the Erasmus offered me with this internship, I, you know, I'd be answering no to a lot of questions. Um, so that's my experience of funding anyway through the Erasmus Plus scheme. Um, you, you, you're entitled to it for a year after you graduate. It's something that maybe not everyone knows about. I've had these conversations in, in in the past with other recent graduates and say, oh, really, I'm entitled to a year, you know. Um, so it is there. There's a wonderful resource, erasmusintern.org, where there's a lot of different um, uh, different internships available, especially actually in, in the photography and arts field. So that would be my, uh, I suppose, my experience with it anyway. 
Um, interesting, but just to, to reiterate that, um, uh, you know, um, the Department of Film and Media and the Photography Programme are here to support graduates. With any advice on any aspects, whether it's Erasmus Plus, future um, partnerships, connecting into industry or a funding application, we do our best to support that. And just on that note, and uh, forgive me if you touched off this in the beginning, um, we can move on to something else, but just wondering what is the industry like at the moment? What are the developments? What are the shifts and changes that are happening recently? Because even looking at the three of you, you're, 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 you're all super talented uh, photographers, but you're all kind of delving into different areas experimentation or studio or you know David you do um you know your uh fine art printing as well you know there's you've all diversified off into you know specialist areas probably covering much more than that as well but just wondering you know what are the kind of career paths and options how are they shifting and changing are they shifting and changing I mean David do you have any insights uh, there you're out a bit longer from college than. Um, so what I was what I was saying to Michelle earlier, just before you came came along, was that I suppose oh, yeah. that uh, my my main area of work was in the cultural heritage yeah. sector, um, but that is that is a huge area of growth going forward due to the fact that there's huge government funding for um, digitization of collections in institutions like uh, the National Library, the National Museum, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And they're both areas I've worked in in the past. Um, I have recently consulted with the National Library on you know, sourcing new equipment and, um, and working out a schedule for shooting and stuff like that and, and, and providing training to their staff that are working there at the moment. Um, and I'm going to be returning to them pretty soon with, with some training, some on, on, on job training. So there's an area that's not quite of really, really known. Uh, I think there's four people in there working at the moment um, and they're working with high end digital cameras. Um, but they've got a high turnaround of work. Uh, it's very, very tough, I suppose, in that um, you're, you're handling a lot of materials, you're seeing a lot of materials, which is the upside of it, I suppose, too. Um, um, I've been in front of some amazing um, cultural um, artifacts in, in, my, in my work there that's been amazing in that respect. Um, from Yeats manuscripts to original Joyce notebooks, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of stuff. Even when they were just being, you know, dragged out of um, out of storage, that there was one particular wow. one in, that turned up in London, and I was asked to go over to to make some photographs of that, and we ended up flying back with it in the government jet, which was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that to happen, you know, but those kind of things do actually happen in those mundane kind of areas where, you know, where uh, where work can be kind of, um, how do you say, repetitive and, uh, you know, but it's in, but, but can be very, very interesting and very rewarding too. I mean, so that's, that's one area. Really, yeah, that's really that's interesting. Because when I go into the National Library, yeah. And I'm researching photographs for documentaries. I can thank you for these beautiful high res. Uh, no, no, you no, can. That, no, that's not the, no, no. Well, no, in actual <laughs> fact, I, I kind of was working there slightly before that. And my, my okay. job when I was working there was actually involved in kind of preservation before digitization, oh, okay. which was interesting too. But I was moving stuff from glass plates onto four by five camera for a while. And that but was I very, very thank interesting. thank you that too. they're even there and preserved for me to access. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, know, I know definitely they still use, I made some photographs of those Joyce notebooks for sure in London and, and they made them on a really, really, uh, on a, the first 2000 euro digital camera that was around, like when it went, prices started dropping a little bit. I think it was a, a six megapixel camera or something like that. So the guys will know that's a really, really tiny thing. And um, they still use them, you know, so that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, it's an area of photography that people don't really look too much at for sure as a career path, but um, it's very, very interesting. Um, but then again, also, I mean, things have changed hugely in, um, in um, online marketing or um, uh, online shopping. So there's a huge, huge um, marketplace for, um, for photography, for, for online 
uh, sales. Um, I think there's a there's a guy I know who set up a company in the last few years. I think it's called We Shoot. I'm nearly sure which work towards that um, you know digital merchandising kind of stuff. And they're they're busy, busy, busy booked out. Um, and they're in Richmond Road. I think they have a studio set up there. So they're working to Arnott's and BTs and places like this. And probably um, there's another guy I know who worked in a place that uh, photograph mostly food, right? But for but for extremely fast turnaround commercial applications, you know? So it's a digital, a truck will arrive with a pallet full of food, it's photographed and this kind of stuff and it's turned around really, really quick. It's sent off to, um, the, the digital files are sent somewhere out there in the world for, um, you know, to have the backgrounds removed and next thing they're up in the shop on sale this kind of stuff. So there's all that digital merchandising is a huge area. Um, um, I don't know how things have changed in fashion or advertising. I'm, I'm sure they're still kind of the same as they've always been. So if you wanted to work, move into those areas, you know, you look for someone who's working in that area, try to assist, build up a portfolio and present that to an advertising agency and you, you might, you know, get the And when you say that, David, are you talking about seeking out photographer's work that you admire is this is the advice and um directly approaching them requesting yeah, shadow yeah, absolutely. To i mean, work I, mean for I, a day. I, yeah. I think the most important thing actually as 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 a photographer is to be you know open and communicative with other people who work in the in in that business or people who are interested in working in that area and, and being free and sharing information and i think that sort of is the kind of way people work you know um so there are photographers out there who work to uh, advertising agencies and are successful i can think johnny savage is one who's quite successful at the minute and and i work with him in, on a on an education course um but you know he's he's perhaps looking for people to work with him he needs people to work for assistance etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's a really really good area in which to cut your teeth i'm sure he worked with somebody previously, you know, and that's where he got his, you know, where he started to work and, 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 and started to work and, uh, um, uh, you know, so it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways of looking at it um, in that you can uh, combine, and I see people do it very successfully, you know, a focus on their own um, personal practice mm. and uh, dipping toes into the com more commercial world to sustain yourself um yeah. for a living i mean um uh sarah louise is that something that you're conscious of and i'll come to you mark as well maybe uh, that you may have to find a balance between the two or 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 focus on two and of course there are, are photographers who can maintain you know 100 percent creative uh, practice um but i'm sure it's like documentary filmmaking or anything like that that it's it's almost a vow of poverty, uh, you know, uh, but needn't be. But I think with the increase in funding that David's talking about, that that's shifting and changing as well. How, how conscious do you feel about that in your career? How, how do you feel about it, uh, Sarah Louise? Um, I mean, money is a necessary thing for anyone to get by and to live. Um, so it is, of course, something that hangs out in the back of my mind. Um, and I think maybe i was a little bit naive going into last year but probably because of the pandemic and everything as well i quit my job and i was like great perfect we're gonna be artists this is all gonna go great swimming um and in saying that i had to i didn't have to but i accepted a lot of freelance work so i took photos of someone's house i did a video for someone selling their house i did baby photos i did a time lapse standing in the middle of Town swamp for days on end of someone doing a mural like I took I took the jobs that came to me and I accepted anything that would come um and I think David was talking about apprenticeships just about Johnny Savage there or um even the photographer's assistant jobs they're amazing like apprenticeships is something that goes back through the art world for years on end and doing assisting jobs is the best way to learn it's first-hand information um so if anything like that is coming up take it and say yes because all you're going to do is learn um but the balance between the two is difficult because the work that i'm doing and applying to these shows it costs money to for a lot of these applications it's it could be anywhere between 20 euros or five euros up to 60 or to 100 um and those are expenses that with the nose you don't get anything back out of them so 
you do need to have some kind of funding backing you, whether it's your savings or whether it's that you are doing a part time job. And that's now filling it in. So I've started working in the library project, which is a great place to be. Um, it's run by Photo Ireland. So I'm immersed now in the business side of photography and the art books and everything. So I'm seeing that. But it's also giving me the funds to just go and throw my work at people and say, look at my work, please <laughs> accept me, don't accept me. Um, but it is definitely hard finding that happy medium um, because there's not going to be for everyone. Like there's the one in a million who is going to get picked up straight out of college and they can have an artist studio and that's going to be their life for the rest of their life. You're lucky if that's what you're getting. That is very far and few. Um, so I think the graft still needs to be there. You need to be willing to put the time in to get the money out of it, to put the time in to get the money out of it. Um, mm. an endless cycle of money making and art making <laughs> <laughs> I think um you know you're you're not long graduated but I think you have a, a a really good strong clear picture of 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 like I'm 20 years uh in the industry more since graduation and I'm still only coming to realize some of the things that you've articulated there uh Sarah Louise so I think you have a a really clear sense and maybe uh, Mark as well it's kind of moved me into thinking about you know the importance of network as well and you know i mean talk about any element of what we've brought up in the last while mark but even sarah's going into the library project which is wonderful you're surrounded by these beautiful photo books some self-published some not but you know they're works of art even in their printing you hear photographers talking about this place in london or that place that prints it you know and i love listening to that uh kind of um passion for the printed image and uh, I'm thinking about as well, like Arl Photo Fest or Parry Photo, how important, I know photographers who've just kind of done a big dive into those worlds, really frightening and you have to be quite brave and, but getting to know photographers from around the world as well as your own community. Um, Mark, speak to any element there that, that is relevant for you or that you'd like to talk about that might be useful for yeah. anyone considering a career in photography. I think it's so important to familiar, familiarize yourself with the field in mm -hmm. Ireland, especially pop into the library project, have a flick through the books, have a chat to the guys in They're there. They're gorgeous. The, the work is gorgeous in there. The hours you yeah. could spend in there, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but just familiarize yourself with the field, know a few names, talk to people at openings, go to exhibitions. Um, I think the best place to start really is our faculty. We have fantastic member we, we, we have some fantastic members of faculty who are artists out there actually practicing in the real world. Sure. You know, you, you 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 walk into the RHA and you see names. Oh, I know this person. This you know, <laughs> that, that was my first year lecture. And how wonderful is that? I think, obviously, in, you know, in Dublin and Ireland, we are quite a tightly knit family. We all kind of know each other. So it's so lovely to have th these networks to walk into these openings and know familiar faces. Further afield, of course, it's it's lovely to familiarise yourself with other, you know, other spaces. I'm aware of um, very similar institutions, like say, Photo Ireland or the Library Project, say in Lisbon or in in Seville. I lived in Estonia for a while, so I'd know a few names in Estonia. Um, and you know, living in these countries, you do very quickly get to kind of recognise a few places, um, uh, a few names, which is lovely. Um, on the topic of networking, um, Instagram. This is, I think, at the moment, the biggest way that, the largest way that we consume images at such a rate. Um, I'd like to say it's quite important to have a, a, have a presence there, to be uploading content. Um, I've gotten jobs through my Instagram page. I've gotten jobs where I have to photograph content for the purpose of Instagram stories and posts and stuff. And there are people willing to pay money for that and people that value it. Um, so that for me has been how I've gotten quite a few of my jobs and how I've sort of been identified, I suppose, out there in the world. Oh, I saw your Instagram profile. You're, I mean, I'm a still life photographer. Oh, you're the still life photographer. It's nice to see your face. And, you know, um, to follow these pages as well, Photo Ireland, et cetera, to know what's going on in the world. It's a wonderful resource for open calls for exhibitions happening. Um, you know, I think we, it's it's possible to spend too much time scrolling on your phone, but I really do think, for me anyway, I've it has been a very valuable resource. 
I think that that's really, really good advice. You know, once upon a time, we would have had to traipse around several, you know, printers, the gallery photography, there wasn't even the library project, say, when I'm thinking back uh, before it even existed. And you'd have to find people to find these deadlines to find, you know, or look up each individual site. Now you do have um, kind of one stop shops in, in Instagram where people are putting up all the deadlines for you, telling you what event is on. And, you know, a lot of these openings and gatherings, they're free to go to. Um, and they are exactly the kind of place where you will hear about an opportunity or even just to be around other practitioners um, talking about your craft, I think is always kind of uplifting. Um, so um, great, uh, thank you for that, Mark. I'm very conscious that we've less than 10 minutes left. I can't believe it. Um, I was only getting going um, after mm -hmm. my late start. Um, um, but I will go around one quick question for everyone. I know, Michelle, if we have to take, uh, any questions um, from anyone uh, participating? Do we know yet if there are or? No questions just yet. Right. I'm keeping an eye right. here so for you, but just to say yeah. anyone watching who wants to post us in a question, we're very happy to take it. Yeah, we'll make time. But I have one last question for everyone. Um, and bearing in mind, we're, we have probably about five minutes in total. Um, but it is, um, it is this. So, I've actually just forgotten it now while I'm talking. That's terrible. No, I know what it is. <laughs> Sorry, okay. everyone. Um, it is this. Um, what is um, the best advice that you would give to somebody thinking of about to take on the BA um, in photography? And what is it that you love about what you do uh, about being a photographer in the world? If you can answer mm -hmm. one or either of those questions, whichever one you find more interesting David. i would i would think that if, if you're launching if you're starting that course of study the most important thing is to actually think of what you would like to get out of it at the end of the the, the experience what can you take forward with you um realizing that there's you know several genres of of, of possibility that you could be focusing on realizing that there's several levels of, of of technical skills that you need to acquire or some that are more important than others particular to where you want to go um realizing too as mark said earlier there are really really people with huge amounts of information in their heads walking around in these places and if you can you know sit them down and have a chat with them that's one also you've got a peer group that is so enthusiastic and you know high on photography or whatever that might be and you got to you got to immerse yourself in that sort of uh, that community you know and and uh, and grow and be as helpful to those as they are to you also and if you can give as much as you can you're going to get it back in spades you know yeah. uh, when i went in when i went into um to 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 Dunleary, my 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 interest was in coming out at the other end with um with X, Y, and Z skills, and I wasn't really interested in, in any sort of academic um, um, reward at the end of it. But you know, I left with a distinction, and my work was in the gallery of photography straight off the bat in, in an wow. exhibition on portraiture uh, in 1997 or whenever it was. So, boom, it happens. If you know, if you put the a much of the work in, but if you immerse yourself in the pool, you know, it, it comes to you for sure. Uh, Sarah Louise. Um, yeah, I would say explore every avenue that piques your interest while you're in college. It is the one and only time that you're going to have four years to explore whatever you want. The course itself was really customizable. I didn't know what appropriation was when I went into it. I came out of it writing a, like a first class honours thesis on appropriation, making up a theory in my head. So explore any possibility that you can do. Um, and the thing that I love about my work is that I'm making it for myself, but it is for everyone else as well. At the same time, it relates back to people. It's things that I would have loved to have heard when I was growing up. Um, so it's therapeutic in a sense, and it's a little bit cathartic. Um, and to know that my work has an impact on other people and makes people feel things, um, it just builds a community where I've always felt alone, um, which is a huge thing for anyone. I mean, most of my work is revolving around mental health in some way, shape or form. So having that 
sort of circle getting built up when that connection between all these strangers who are all just looking at the same piece of work is without a doubt my favorite part of doing what I do. Thanks so much. Uh, Mark? Um, I wanted to say it's it's a term that's been that has been mentioned a lot now with COVID and being you know we're on screens a lot of the learning does happen in the corridors it's the little conversations that you have in between your lecturers they're people too they are your colleagues they are your peers have conversations with them for example David I think you took a class for us in second year now David prints my photographs for me you know so it's all about networking and meeting people um, use every single lens use every single camera that they have experiment um, we have a brilliant tech, tech, technician, Stephen Nestor, who is such a resource. Have conversations with them. Um, you know, he'll throw a lens at you and say, "Here, have a go with this, you know, weird wide-angle tilt-shift lens experiment." You will never have that opportunity again, or you'll never have that access. Mess around in the studio, try different lights settings, the dark room. One thing I wish I did was spend more time in the dark room, trying more experimental techniques. It's such a resource. Go to every lecture because you never know what's going to happen in between. That, that really would be my advice. I think that's great advice, Mark. I love that. Even when I look back at my own time, my undergrad, I wish I'd maybe taken the equipment out and played around a bit more, been playful with my practice, I think is really, and like you said, Sarah, like it's exactly um, the undergrad time is the exact time. You'll never have that dedicated time to really play and out of play if you take your play seriously out of play comes um well it, it comes new ideas about your own practice new ideas of expression and i love that you brought in again the faculty because i think um i can say this because even though i'm head of the department i don't teach on this program that the um the experience and the dedication and the quality particularly of the ph photography lectures is quite extraordinary and I know it because I see it in the relationships with the graduates but with the current students and also they're all almost all of them are still working on their own practice all of the time Martin got an Arts Council bursary last year so they're living it as well living and breathing it with you as equals but I think that that's all about sharing and kind of um trying to kind of push each other forward because I think lectures get a lot from that as well by working with um like if I, I when I hear um them talking about your work Sarah and Mark David like it's 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 inspiring the way that they talk about it because I think it lifts them you know as well in their own so it's a kind of a there's a symbiosis or something that's magical there um I'm really really proud of this program I think it's it's exceptional and the proof is in the work that's taking place during the study, but also the life um, and careers that are going on afterwards. Um, it's just extraordinary. And it's, of course, that's not all down to the programme, it's down to the quality of the candidates that are coming forward to apply. But so um, it's, it's, it's both. And I know we have to finish up, um, Michelle, but I just wanted to say thank you again um, to these three brilliant, talented alumni of the uh, BA in photography. and. Um, I uh, look forward to watching all of your work uh, into the future and I've enjoyed every bit of what I've seen um, to date, um, loved it in fact and always keep in touch with us and I know you will because you already do and anything we can ever do to help in terms of supporting funding applications just come straight to me even, the photography team are so busy, I can always help with that um, in any or anyone else you know that needs uh, help with that don't hesitate to come to us um, uh, because we want to keep those relationships going far into the future. And anyone listening in who has any questions about the programme, they can find all our contact details on the website. And even if you go through Michelle she'll, or anyone else, they will uh, direct your question um, to us. So thanks again, David, Sarah Louise and Mark, and good luck with everything that you do. We'll be watching closely and um, supporting you all the way. Thank you. Thank you.